now a bit of the advertising. We always have to do a bit of advertising, but it's really just showing you the antennas we've specifically developed for IoT applications. And we, I think we've done, we had an antenna like which you could just put down it had magnets on it, um, which was called the Omni 39. We now got this 280. And it's firstly a whole different kettle of fish in terms of frequencies, just covers about everything that you can use. And this is the big difference, you know, because even if they're not using this now, they may start using this in nine months' time and very likely will. And uh, you need an antenna that would work then. You don't want to go replace, again, five or 10,000 antennas because the operators start using different um, frequencies. Um, this one's also just been much more universal in the sense that it's got magnets, it's got a mount, you can put it against the wall, against the pole, so it's designed for pole mounting. Um, and uh, magnetic, virtually every possible form that such an antenna would be mounted in. This is the Expo 1. This is an omnidirectional antenna, even though it doesn't look so omnidirectional. Um, this antenna, again, covers a lot of the frequency ranges. We will extend it to more because it's everyone's demands. Beautiful because you don't have to direct it. You can put it against the window, you can put it against the wall, against on a pole. Um, and all of those different modes, it's our best seller. So at this stage, this is our um, highest selling antenna. And um, this would be a, a different application for, for metering. So um, this is the dash one. And um, there you can see it sort of fitting on top of a meter. People were putting the antennas inside. Now, uh, not sure where these guys went to university, but uh, that's called a Faraday cage. You know, stuff doesn't get out there. So in this case, that works a lot better. It's got a little mount so that it can neatly interface to the electronics on the inside. And of course, covers all of these frequency ranges. I think I've spoken about this guy. It's just showing a few different mounting options for it. And I'm not gonna spend too much time. We are trying to keep our webinars shorter so that we hopefully can do it a little bit more regular. So anyone interested can ask afterwards or um, of course can also look at the uh, whole presentation. Uh, this is fantastic antenna. I was laughing. Uh, there's a company in the US that was actually advertising our antenna. And I looked at their video on YouTube and I discovered things about the antenna I didn't know myself. But this guy could be mounted in about 105 different ways. Um, so it's got a removable spigot. It's got two different length spigots. It comes with adapters on the cables. It can go up to five in one, but we design it in various formats. Um, it's certainly the highest performance vehicle mount type of antenna that we've got. Magnets, double-sided tape, sideways exit of all five cables, all can go out to the bottom. You could screw it down and the screw holes provided. Um, it is good, waterproof, rugged. It's been accepted by um, one of the biggest motor manufacturers in the US where they now stand it fitted. I don't think we're allowed to say it yet, but if you go to YouTube, you'll actually see that there's other people that will tell you about it because they're resellers for this company. It covers anything, including the 400 meg band, which I think is getting popular in parts of Europe for LTE as well, but sometimes for other type of applications. And uh, it can be configured in different ways. We've done one, I think at the moment, it's a seven in one. Um, in other words, that uh, for some items, which has got two, MIMA LTE modules built inside. So we're quite proud of this new baby. Um, the pack range of antennas. Uh, once again, I'm not gonna run through all the mounting. Pretty similar range of mountings to the, the ones that I just mentioned um, for the MIMA 3 antenna. Um, but once again, if you go compare its performance, and please do, um, the actual performance like I showed you in some of those slides, I think there's very little that beats it in terms of performance. But you also go online, you'll see that we exposed it to 30 kilovolts and I can't remember, 200 or something uh, kilometer an hour winds and drove a Jeep over it and hit it with a, a big piece of steel. It is one of the most rugged antennas I think on the market. This is the Ely range. Um, this is the, the old range, if I can call it that. This is the stuff we've sold that literally thousands, most probably tens of thousands of, and which became very popular in the last year and a half to two. And this is some of the new um, antennas we have to um, release this year. And this one is virtually released. 
Um, this um, Elite 5 is the one that will do the LTE range. This one here, although it's been used already a lot, uh, it's not formally released. It was designed specifically for some customers, but it will be released. And we're putting new export models out there, which will cover all of the 5G bands as well. And uh, this one excites us a lot. We'll release more information, but that's not a new export too that only covers these bands. We're using some very advanced new antenna design technologies, and we're in fact improving this export too in its current bands by about two to three dB, which is incredible. So we call it, the, it's gonna be the 5G killer um, antenna. Um, that's the LoRa roadmap. We are going to do a, all of these antennas, or many of them that you're familiar with, but we're gonna do them where they specifically optimized for these bands. It is a lot more effective because at the moment they're doing the LTE, which goes from DC to light, and there's compromises involved. We believe if we do some custom ones in this range will come out soon, Q4, or Q1 2020, I think that would be an excellent solution because they would uh, do a lot better in that frequency band. They don't need broad bandedness because um, those standards are very well defined for those frequency bands. I hope that covered a number of interesting topics on some of the new products, some of the problems, and some of the things one should consider. Um, I'm not sure, Stephen, whether there's any questions that's coming through.